Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Trash Tapes. Today we're going to talk about Thou Shalt Not Kill, Except. I think I found this tape. Uh, it's been a while now. I found it at a random thrift store. I think I was just happened to find some VHS tapes there was sorting through and I was like, oh, this one looks interesting. And at first it got me. I'd never heard of this movie before. I was like, oh, it's just like a Vietnam war movie and typically they're pretty boring. Like there's not a lot to it. But then I read the back and I was like, I have to make a trash tapes on this. It's ridiculous sounding. It just kept getting more and more crazy. Thou shall not kill, except. And by except, they mean pretty much just kill everybody. <laughs> Picture on the back of some Vietnam soldiers, you're like, eh, it's going to be a war movie. Probably not that great. Now, something I didn't realize until I started watching, it has Sam Raimi, yes, the famous director, Sam Raimi. You like this? It's fun. Of Evil Dead fame. He plays the cult leader. Cult leader, you say? In a war movie? Yes. Let me just read the back for you, and it'll all make sense why I decided to do this movie today. All right. <clears throat> Vietnam, 1969. Marine Sergeant Jack Stryker and his platoon are trapped outside a Viet Cong occupied village where he catches two bullets to the leg. Stryker's friend hoists him onto his back and the two men blaze through the village blowing away everything in their path. Stryker returns home, a casualty of the war. He plans to see Sally, an old girlfriend, and recreate the love and peace he once knew. After hours of waiting for her, he goes to her house to find that a cult of crazed killers have kidnapped Sally and killed her grandfather by using him as a human dartboard. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, 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 do it! Look at it! Look at him fucking bleed! Yeah, ah, you killed ah, him. That's much better than yours! Ah, yeah. Look at him die! Look at him die! Look He's dying oh. real good! Yeah. Stryker and his marine friends, who are home on leave, form a three-man annihilation squad and begin a mission of ruthless revenge. This will be one time when the death sentence would be merciful compared to the doom that awaits the cult members. Come on, man. Hop on. No. <laughs> Hop off. <laughs> this movie is weird in the fact that it's it's very it's not a good movie. It's a B movie, but there were elements. There was like a few little key moments where I was like, oh, like I could see, I could see that they were trying, and there was actually some really good shots where moments like scenes where I was like, oh, that's a cool shot. I liked what they were doing there. I, there was some artistry in that shot. It actually looked really good. <laughs> Particularly when it had anything to do with the cult members. Uh, the first time you see the cult, they're like breaking into like a house party. And there were some pretty cool scenes there. They do like an exterior shot where there's like gunshots going off and it's like lighting up the windows. Um, they do some interesting stuff too when Jack, our main character, is trying to find his girlfriend. They do like an interesting like shot that moves around the house kind of signifying him like frantically running around the house looking for her it doesn't quite work but i get what they're going for and that was kind of cool <laughs>
there's like these little moments where you can tell like they're actually trying and like whoever made it had had talent like they weren't just it doesn't fall into the case where it's like galaxy invader if you've ever seen that movie talked about on this channel where it's literally just a camera running through the woods and everything's wide and flat like they actually tried and the director of this i forget his name um but he's actually gone on to do some other movies as well looks like more b-movie stuff but you know you have sam raimi <laughs> who directed Evil Dead as the <laughs> the head of the cult. And then his brother um, is also plays one of the cult members. So it's cool to see that little touch of in there. And I guess, looking it up afterwards, Bruce Campbell's actually in the movie as well, uncredited. He plays like a news reporter, uh, which is kind of cool. So there's like, if you're a fan of like B-movies, there's all these like cool little touches that kind of stick out. The characters are all pretty one-dimensional, like his group of marine buddies. There's basically just Moonface guy, Lieutenant guy, and big, strong black guy. Like, I don't know any of their names, but, you know, they're distinguishable enough. Um, and there's like a tiny subplot with the lieutenant where he feels bad about leading the men into this ambush and getting killed and supposedly he's going to go talk to Jack when he gets back and rectify that, but literally it takes two seconds. They, like, look at each other, and then that's it. Like, they don't... They're just pals then. Nothing, nothing happens with that. It smells like a cow shit in here. Whew. Sam Raimi, as the cult leader, blows everybody else out of the water because he's just acting crazy. He has some ridiculous lines. Um, and when they capture the girlfriend, Sally, they have, like, this blood ritual or something I, the cult's all about blood and the bloodbath will begin they're writing that on the walls of the places they kill people but they're out in the woods and they have her tied up to some trees and he like dips his hands in a bucket of blood it's not time <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then he like looks down at like one of the other cult members and is like. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, because it's on VHS, like, the transfer, it's so dark and so grainy. I managed to get the tracking working, thankfully, but, like, it is just so dark. You can barely see anything. If this is on a Blu-ray, if they, like, did a good, like, restoration, the movie would actually probably be 50% better than what I saw, because there was a lot of darkness, especially, like, fight scenes or, like, things that happen with the cult where they're fighting them or, like, in this gun battle. I couldn't see a lot of what was happening. But for being a tiny, low-budget movie, I mean, I'm pretty impressed. They did some cool stuff. They actually had some squibs and some pyrotechnics. They really loved the effect of somebody getting, like, stabbed. They did that a lot. Um, speaking of getting stabbed, the his one Marine buddy, the big dude, the big jack guy, he gets stabbed in the gut with a knife by one of the cultists. And then manages to kill him and get away. And he just is, like, laying on the ground. He's like, oh. And he just starts grabbing, like, pine needles and, like, shoving it in the wound. Like, trying to pack it. And I'm just like, oh, gosh. Why would you do that? <laughs> they really used what they had available to the best effect. Like, they had some motorcycles... They had guns, and they had woods, and they dang sure better used them. And they had, like, a lot of fake blood. They also were trying to ride that line of, like, humor 
and horror because there's like really intense stuff where with the cult where they're like you know alluding to rape and like killing people and they even like show a baby in a crib and the cult leaders like going for the baby and you're just like oh and then but then they're doing goofy stuff where like a cult member shoots an arrow at the one marine and he's like ah and he looks down and the arrow's like stuck in the butt of his gun and he's like it's like goofy but like so the tone keeps jumping back and forth between goofy and very serious there was one moment that actually scared me i was kind of like half paying attention i was looking over and i looked back oh let's talk about the main character jack striker and his girlfriend sally so, like, they have a flashback in the beginning where he's in Nam and he's dreaming about, you know, the good old days with Sally. And this is like they're falling out. So he's back in the States in this flashback, I guess, on leave. And they're at, like, a drive-in. And she's like, oh, you're going to come to prom with me. And he's like, I didn't agree to go to prom. I didn't even go to my own prom. And she's like, but what am I going to do on Friday night? And he's like, I don't know, but I'm not going to be there. And she just is like, oh, and like gets out of the car. So he's not a great guy. He didn't treat her very well because he doesn't really give a reason why he's not going to prom other than he doesn't want to. And leaves her crying. And then flash forward when he returns home from war it's six years later. And she just is like all smitten with him right away. And they... And he doesn't... He's not super nice to her. Like, he, he's like, I'll see you tomorrow. Pick me up at 11.30. And she's like, okay. And then she doesn't show up on time because she's being kidnapped by the call. And he's just like, oh, freaking broads. Because she's late. So he's like, I don't know. Just, he doesn't seem to care about her at all. And even at the end, like, him and his buddies are just worried about killing everybody. They just waste the whole cult and instead of like looking for her or any other survivors they just hop in their car and start driving away <laughs> and as they're driving away like s survivors are like coming out of the woods and they're just like looking not even like caring they're not stopping to help anybody they're just driving away from the scene like yep we killed everybody mission accomplished and as they're driving all of a sudden he looks over and he sees Sally walking out of the woods and he's like oh and he like hits the driver and he hops out, puts her in the car, and they just drive away. There's no dialogue or nothing. But it's like, he was about ready to just leave. Like, he wasn't even looking for her the whole time in the last end fight. He wasn't looking for her, he didn't care about her, he wasn't asking where she is. He just was fighting the cult leader. And then once the cult leader was dead, he was out of there. It just happened to be that he ran into her and was like, oh, guess I better pick her up. So... <laughs> so that was, you can tell, it was just an afterthought. Your order, sir. Shit. Lots of little tidbits that make it just enough to be above, like, a crappy movie. Like, it does just enough to be like, okay, like, keep holding your interest. Um, I definitely wouldn't throw this one in the trash. I'm going to put it on the wall. It's It's a keeper just because it's so odd. Not even odd, just like, it's a nice little, like, moment in B-movie history. Like, you can tell that people put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into making this, and they actually cared about it, and you can feel that they really tried. And because of that, it's fun to watch. Um, so yeah, if you ever get your hands on Thou Shall Not Kill Except... I'd recommend watching it at least once just for the fun factor. Um, but yeah. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you on the next Trash Tapes.
Oh, 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 oh,